Hey everyone, it's Kay, aka Purple Teapot. Let's talk about New Amsterdam Season 3, Episode 12, Things Fall Apart. And don't forget to like and subscribe because 98% of you who watch my videos are unsubscribed. So let's get into it. And don't forget, this video does contain spoilers for New Amsterdam. Let's start off with Iggy. This storyline with Chance is about to be a whole mess. Chance makes me scared. It's weird to me that Iggy is taking his stalker's feelings into consideration when his family's safety is at risk. Even though Chance is mentally ill, it doesn't mean that he should be excused for his stalking. Now let's talk about Lauren. Her decision to wait to get decontaminated was a poor one and the possibility of her injuring that patient while she was blind was so high like i love that her focus is helping people but i wish she helped herself more i love her friendship with casey and yes just a friendship i am not a shipper because i don't understand the shipping but okay i feel like him turning down the job wasn't because of their friendship and more because he knows that she's not ready to run the ed without him lovin's always the one who makes a lot of mistakes a lot of the time it's always crazy he's picking up after her behind the scenes also casey is clearly unhappy with his job if he's going out doing interviews i just think lauren isn't ready to run the ed by herself i don't know tell me what you think in the comments okay now i want to talk about this situation with floyd and lynn it's about to be so messy and i'm here for it i let my morals go when max had an emotional affair with helen while georgia was still alive i'm going to do the same for floyd and then she has an open marriage so why not one thing i do get the vibe is that she said okay to this open marriage but she probably isn't okay with this open marriage but she's going to take advantage of it now because she really likes floyd my only thing is i feel like this is just going to end up being very messy because they've got feelings involved and does she want to leave her husband like i bet her husband doesn't dig the people that he's sleeping with like these two look so great together like compared to floyd and evie floyd and lynn are next level i'm sorry floyd is about to be a concubine and when his mom finds out that he's dating a married woman she is going to flip she really is she's gonna go off on her son i'm going to have to respectfully tell mama floyd that she's doing too much flynn for life can we talk about lynn's outfit when she opened the door the silk shirt that was buttoned all the way down that you could see her bra like it was so sexy she knew what she was doing and floyd couldn't stop looking did you see his neck was all the way down he wasn't even looking her in her eye he was just looking at titties and I understand because she looked great. Now let's talk about Helen. Last episode, Mina tells her that something's missing in her life and she hopes that she finds it. And after speaking briefly with a therapist and then a nun, Helen ends up at a mosque at the end of the episode. This episode, we see Max ask her about the prayer beads she's holding, which was his way of trying to get her to talk to him. But then she tells him that it's personal. But later when she thinks that he's dying, she uses the prayer beads to pray for him. A lit reader on Tumblr, which I can't find the source, said that he asked her, what do you pray for? And she says, I pray you don't leave me. I pray you don't leave me. Charlene are just next level. Like, Helen is next level. I love that she was vulnerable in that moment. Even though I didn't get to hear it, you could see it. I love that she got to open up to him, even though it was under less than great circumstances. Before this, she seemed quite closed off and she used helping people as a distraction from her problem. Max does it as well. I think her faith and her relationship with Max will help her open up. If there's one person who can genuinely get Helen to open up, it's Max. From the moment they met, they've always been open with each other. And it only stopped because Georgia died. And this episode put them back on track with being open with each other. This episode showed me once again how great Helen is. The fact that even though she stepped down as deputy medical director, she's still doing the job just shows how much of a gem she is. The fact that instead of going to Max, Dora went straight to Helen, it's kind of comical. She knows to go to the logical half of the sharp duo when she wants something done correctly like everyone goes to helen when they want something done correctly my hope for the rest of the season for helen 
is that it's chill. I know it won't be. It's what I can hold because she deserves to just be chill and calm. Now let's talk Max, aka the idiot. Let me start with a disclaimer that I love the character of Max and even though he's an idiot, he's our idiot and most importantly he's Helen's idiot. There really was people in my comments thinking I was seriously hating on that man in my last video. I wouldn't ship Sharpwin if I hated him. I realised that it was all in the name of Sharpwin but that man almost died this episode. He almost left Luna an orphan. I don't think he realises what would happen to the people around him if he died. I really wish that he took care of himself better and I know Helen does too. I hope that these near death experience won't hurt his chances during this custody battle between Max and the Bennett. This custody battle I think will be a great opportunity for Max to reevaluate his priorities. After this episode it was made clear that Helen is a priority and the next episode I hope he shows that Luna is also a priority. I think that he should step back a little as med the medical director who does everything and becomes the medical director who thinks before he does because he has a family at home who loves him. I think the Bennets deciding to tell him that they're trying to take Luna away after this man almost died was a rotten move. Like Gwen. Calvin, leave the room. Like I swear it was the ghost of Georgia that possessed her mom to call at that time. It makes no sense. Like did anyone notice how they left the apartment in a hurry like they were trying to kidnap that child? Cause low slash high key they were taking that child to live with them permanently without Max's permission and Max is her only parent. I think that the next episode will be a great opportunity for him to get rid of that ring. Clearly while he still thinks of them as family they don't think the same about him. All those episodes ago when we met them I could see them causing trouble and we all said a costly battle and here they go. They have the space, they have the time, they have the money for Luna. Max has the money and it's time for him to find a new place. He could also cut back his hours at the hospital to make time for Luna. I see people defend the Bennets and say that they should take Luna because Max doesn't have time but isn't that true for all working parents? You just have to find time. Max has been trying to put in effort to be there for Luna and whenever Gwen and Calvin are around they have tried to downplay his efforts to try. Yes he could do better but the Bennets act like he's neglecting her. Yes Luna's best friends are the vultures and the mice in that apartment but she's happy that way. She doesn't belong permanently with her grandparents and all this is just going to cause tension between Max and the Bennets. How will Max trust them after after all this not to take Luna next time they spend time with her? It just puts a wedge between them and it's because of the Bennets. It's like they're trying to take an authority that they don't have. I think that this would be the best time to start the blended Sharp Goodwin family. I always talk about how disappointing it is that we haven't got to see Helen hold or spend time with Luna. Luna first laughed with Helen. She she loves Helen because like it's in her DNA to love Helen. It would never sit right with me that Max let his rebound around his child more than the love of his life. Even though it will never sit right with me, we move on. Also, Helen will make sure Luna is finally wearing clothes that match. My friend JD is always talking about how they dress Luna. She said to me how Helen needs to hurry up and be her mum so that she can finally be dressed nicely. Whenever Max and Gwen dress her, it always looks a mess. Helen will have her in designer names that normal people don't even know about. Luna could be babysat by cousin Mina while Max and Helen are on date. The possibilities are endless. I hope Max gets custody and only lets the Bennett see Luna once a year because asking for custody was doing too much it really was. Now Sharpwin at the start of this episode we finally see Max going out of his way to talk to Helen and not want anything more than to be around her and even though she outwardly found the interaction irritating it was nice to see him trying it was a glimpse of him trying to keep their friendship even though 
they don't work together all the time anymore. Now before I get into talking about the shower and hospital room scene, I just want to give a shout out to the writer, director and cinematographer for the sharpening scenes during this episode. Everything was perfect. The only thing I ask is to see the script to confirm what Max and Helen said in that shower scene. We want to know. I want to know. Now the scene in the room where the poison was held was perfection. From the way Helen and Max were arguing to Helen's brilliant idea to seal the drain. I love the way she screamed at him to stop telling her to leave. No one can tell me that they're not husband and wife. I love how they're both equally stubborn. Helen didn't want to leave him and he didn't want her to stay and be poisoned. So cute. The moment where Floyd tells Helen that there's no treatment for the poison, you could see the fear and the sadness and regret in her face. It was at that moment she decided that she would do anything she could to try and save him. I mean she could have left him to wash himself but she did it herself. Twitter agrees that when Max and Helen thought about Helen being on her knees for the first time, it wasn't in this capacity and I really hope my mum never listens to this. This Tumblr lip reader also said that when Max fell on his knees, Helen said, no, fight Max, which he replied, I'm so tired of fighting. Her reaction showed that she really thought that she was going to lose him and she didn't know what to do, so she decided to open up to him about her prayer beads, explaining to him what they were and how she prayed using them. While she was holding him, he asks, what do you pray for? She says, I pray you won't leave me. She acknowledges her feelings for him, for what she believed would be the last time. Later, Helen asks Floyd how he knew to take the shears out of the woman's abdomen, and he tells her the universe. Her prayer for Max work. I know she felt like God put her in that situation to make her realise that the thing that she was missing was Max. Max is the one she's always open up to, and before this, she was stuck. She had no one to talk to and now she has Max back. For a moment she felt as if it didn't work when Max said he couldn't remember. But Max knew immediately she wasn't telling the whole truth when she said stuff. He knew that she always downplays her efforts and he had to make sure that she knew he remembered even though it took him a minute. And he had to make it clear that she was what mattered to him. She is his top priority. He knew she was going to walk away because she always walks away from him. He also knew that after what she did for him that day and all the days before that he couldn't just let her go once more. To the point where he wouldn't even let her leave when he was on the phone. He was like Helen won't be walking away from me anymore. I want to talk about Sharpwin's body language and how their actions spoke a thousand words. That shower scene where Max falls he's holding on to her as if this is the first and only time he's going to get to hold Helen like that when he fell on his side in the shower and Helen pulled him onto her it was almost like she was preparing for him to die in the shower she just didn't know what to do they both thought that these were going to be their last moments together that shower scene was a perfect scene from the way Max snuggled closer to Helen to the way that her lips subtly touched his brow and the way that he touched her chest and was holding onto her braid just the littlest of things that I saw just made this scene perfect. The scene where Helen and Floyd are talking about treatment showed us how much Helen didn't care that others saw her touching Max. It was like she thought that these were their last moments and she wasn't going to let herself be closed off in his last moments. She wasn't going to hide her feelings. I mean the whole hospital already think that they're dating. After Max said, sometimes it takes me a minute to remember what matters more than anything you. All he could do was smile. He was happy that he finally got to tell Helen how he felt. The showrunner said that he was ready episodes ago but she wasn't. You could just see how happy he was being able to say something. He wasn't interrupted. She didn't leave. He just got to express his feelings for her. No guilt, no grief. Just the pure feeling of love towards her and all he could do in that moment was smile and I was smiling too. Everything was perfect. That song in the background pretty much summed up their whole Sharpwin story so far. The way that his hand found her chest while she breathed nervously was perfect and the way that she reassured him it was fine by bringing his hand even closer to her chest with her own hand. The relief on Helen's face made this my favourite scene. She had tears of happiness on her face knowing that the feeling
feelings that she had had for years were mutual. Like she had an inkling, but now she knows. Her smile when Max was on the phone was a smile I hadn't seen. I don't think we've seen Helen smile like that. She was happy that she had opened up to him in that shower scene and that he had finally spoken up. He had finally recognised what she had done for him. This whole season we've been waiting for him to say something and he finally did. And I know we all smile like Helen when he was talking. Well, if you weren't in tears. New Amsterdam's flagship ship is about to set sail and I hope everyone's ready. I've been sat on this boat for two years and I'm ready for it to set sail. Are you? Tell me what you think in the comments. I'd just like to say thanks for watching and listening and don't forget to like and subscribe. For more New Amsterdam takes, I suggest following me on Twitter at purpleteapot1. Have a great break because there's no episode next week. Goodbye. I just want to talk about how high key chaotic I was yesterday to the point where I had to re-record all this. It, I really wanted it to come out on Thursday but the chaos, I just feel like I was on a sharp wind high and I couldn't get the words out of my mouth.